Do you know this one? Oh, I do indeed. It's a lovely thing. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Christmas songs. This year, to set me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. For this list, we're looking at the most festive songs that really get us all into the Christmas spirit. Bear in mind that many of these songs that you may know are actually older or younger than you think. So while we will sometimes be crediting songwriters or composers, mostly we'll be listing them with the artist or artists most associated with the track. Tell us in the comments what your favorite Christmas songs are. Number 20. Feliz Navidad. José Feliciano. Our festive feast begins with some Latin flavor, as José Feliciano's Feliz Navidad takes the number 20 spot. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Originally penned in 1970, the Puerto Rican singer and songwriter ironically wrote the cheerful tune when he was feeling down, or more specifically, homesick. With him stuck on the west coast of the U.S. and his family in New York and beyond, Feliciano took the nostalgia he had of a traditional Puerto Rico Christmas and put it into his work. The resultado? Feliz Navidad, which translates from Spanish to, you guessed it, Merry Christmas. In the over 40 years since its release, it has been covered and re-recorded on multiple occasions. Number 19. I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, The Jackson 5 you might find it hard to believe, but this sweet Christmas jingle is mired in controversy. First recorded by then 13-year-old Jimmy Boyd, the lyrics are told from the perspective of a child who witnessed his father, dressed as Santa Claus, kissing his mother and misinterpreting it as an affair. By today's standards, it's innocuous, but in the 1950s, this was scandalous. Boston's Roman Catholic Church banned the song until Jimmy Boyd visited the archdiocese to defend it. The song has also been famously covered by the Ronettes in 1963, but it's the inimitable voices of the Jackson 5 that take the spot. No group has been able to recapture the brothers' magic in the same way. Number 18. Silent Night. Franz Sava Gruber and Josef Moore. The pride of school nativity plays around the world, Silent Night has the very rare distinction of being declared a song of intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. While so many stars have performed this sweet Christmas carol, it has only recently been discovered who its true composers really were, having been erroneously attributed to Beethoven or Mozart for its near 200 years of existence. In actual fact, Silent Night has rather humble beginnings in small Austrian villages and was penned as a poem by Father Josef Moore not long after the Napoleonic Wars, with a melody added later by Franz Zava Gruber. Number 17. Do They Know It's Christmas? Band-Aid. In 1984, the world was woken up to the horrors of Ethiopian famine via a BBC special report. While many felt overwhelmed, the Boomtown Rats frontman Bob Geldof was incensed. He picked up his phone to call fellow songwriter Midge Yore of Ultravox, and together they came up with a song. Well, Then they invited all the biggest artists of the era to record it together over a long studio session. Those that could did, and the rest is history. Band Aid demands the listener to take a stance. Though the famine has long since ended, the lesson never stops, serving as an annual reminder that we are all capable of helping each other, especially at Christmas. Number 16, Peace on Earth, Little Drummer Boy, Bing Crosby and David Bowie. This 1941 song by Katherine Kennicott Davis is no doubt an enduring Christmas classic, but usually when anyone thinks of the Little Drummer Boy, their minds immediately jump to the David Bowie and Bing Crosby collaboration. Come, they told 
me bum The song is actually two songs sung in counterpoint, Peace on Earth and Little Drummer Boy, and their TV special duet is a somewhat surreal meeting of two very different artists. Bowie purportedly only agreed to duet with Crosby as he knew his mother liked the crooner. While their introductory dialogue is, well, a cringe fest, the song itself has a very special place in our hearts and history, as Bing passed away a month after recording. I played See my the day for him when men of good will live in peace. Number 15, Blue Christmas, Elvis Presley. During the mid-20th century, artists releasing albums devoted solely to the holiday season became all the rage. Such a trend included the one and only Elvis Presley, with his 1957 Christmas album called, well, Elvis's Christmas Album. I'll be so blue, just thinking about you. While a lot of the tracks are good but hardly groundbreaking, there is one particular song that holds a bittersweet place in our hearts. Blue Christmas. It wasn't then as common as it is now to have a somewhat somber song released at Christmas, unless you were a straight-up crooner. But to have a rocker record a blue Christmas song was pretty fresh, even if the song itself was not a Presley creation and was actually first recorded by Doy O'Dell a decade earlier. Number 14, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, Brenda Lee. Released a year after our previous entry was Brenda Lee's Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Fans of the original Home Alone movie will always remember this particular song as underscoring Kevin's savviness of manipulating mannequins and fooling the wet bandits into thinking the house is hosting a party. Lee, like Jimmy Boyd with his aforementioned famous track, was only 13 when she recorded The Rock and Roller. However, unlike Boyd, there's really only been one definitive version of Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, which has been on the Billboard charts as recently as 2017. Rockin' around the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. Number 13, Fairy Tale of New York, The Pogues featuring Kirsty McCall. Our number 13 pick, an appropriately unlucky number, is a lyrical narrative of down-on-their-luck New Yorkers, though none of the performers are from the Big Apple. So happy Christmas, I love you, baby. The track is a favorite of many, and the lyrics are written very much in the character of the quarrelsome protagonists. And therein lies the issue. Ever since its release, the song has had many calls for censorship or removal from the airwaves due to its very offensive and hurtful language, which co-writer and Pogues frontman Shane McGowan included. And the bells are ringing out for Christmas Day. Sadly, re-recording is not an option due to the tragic passing of McCall, and the song remains popular every season. Number 12, it's the most wonderful time of the year, Andy Williams. Heard widely as recently as 2021 in Marvel's Hawkeye trailer, Andy Williams' silky voice remains a staple of the Christmas season. It's the most wonderful time. There have been a number of re-recordings and covers since, but the song wasn't actually the main track of the 1963 release, with Williams' cover of White Christmas taking precedence instead. Despite that, this version remains the hallmark with no artist ever duplicating or replicating the magic of the original. Though the lyrics make references to somewhat outmoded holiday traditions like telling ghost stories, the song is really a list of activities which involve spending Christmas time with loved ones. It's the most wonderful time of the year. That is a theme that really is timeless. Number 11, Jingle Bell Rock, Hollow Notes. Rarely is there a Christmas playlist created without the Hall & Oates pop brilliance of Jingle Bell Rock. If you're wondering why a song from 1983 would sound so much like a 50s tune, then there are two particular reasons. Firstly, the track makes a number of references to plenty of other songs and fads from that rock and roll era, and it's clear that the two artists have a lot of reverence for that time. 
The second reason is, well, although the Hall & Oates song might feel like an original, in actual fact, it is indeed a cover of a 1957 track of the same name, which itself is a derivative of another entry on this list, which we'll get to in a bit. Number 10. The Christmas Song, Merry Christmas to You, The King Cole Trio it might be quite hard to imagine a Christmas season without hearing Nat King Cole's golden-voiced Christmas song over the airwaves. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. The truth is, we very nearly had to go without. While the 1961 version is considered his most well-known, the recording of the track, which was written by Robert Wells and Mel Torme in 1945, had already been recorded by Cole in 1946, and then once again in 1953. So perseverance is the charm with this Christmas classic. Merry Christmas to you. Another interesting thing to note about the lyrics of this song is that it was written in July, during a particularly hot summer, invoking images of roasting chestnuts. Number 9. Frosty the Snowman, Jimmy Durante Most people will recognize Frosty the Snowman as a mainstay character of the festive season and will probably assume has been there for a very long time. What many do not tend to realize, however, is that Frosty the Snowman's introduction into the holiday season came via this song of the same name, and relatively recently. Today, he is perhaps as beloved a Christmas character as, say, Rudolph. But he waved goodbye, saying, Don't cry, I'll be back again someday. The song inspired short films and stories, and even though there is no mention of the festive season in the original lyrics, Jimmy Durante's 1950 version is a Christmas standard. Number 8. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Gene Autry In what could be a case of chicken versus egg in terms of which appeared first, the most famous reindeer of all was actually around before the song about him was released. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. The song was written by Christmas maestro and Frosty creator Johnny Marks to complement the story created by his brother-in-law Robert L. May. Thematically, the idea was to teach children through song to appreciate their unique qualities, in the same way that Rudolph's distinctive red nose is appreciated for clearing the path in the snowstorm. The earliest single recording is from Gene Autry in 1949, one year after the first TV short film adaptation of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee. Number 7. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Bing Crosby. There is a little bit of contention as to what the lyrics Take a Look at the Grand Hotel are referring to in this 1951 classic, and thus how they came to be. It's considered by residents of Nova Scotia, particularly Yarmouth, that the track was written by Meredith Wilson during a stay in the Grand Hotel there. There's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well, the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. The references to the 5 and 10 and the descriptions of the tree inside the hotel and the park opposite are evidence of this. However, Iowa's citizens contend that the lyrics are referring to their historic Park Inn Hotel. Bing Crosby's classic recording was made in 1951, but Johnny Mathis also recorded a beloved version that was used quite memorably in the second Home Alone movie. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, toys in every store. Number 6. Santa Claus is Coming to Town, The Jackson 5 You better watch out as number 6 belongs to the one and only jolly old Saint Nick. Or rather, the announcement that he's coming to town. You better watch out, watch you better not cry, you better not pop, I'm telling you why. Written in 1934, and since recorded by over 200 artists, the timeless track was first broadcast during the Great Depression to encourage people to be charitable to those who were struggling during Christmas. Although Bing Crosby and the Andrews sisters famously joined talents to release their own version, it was the inclusion on the clearly influential The Jackson 5 Christmas album that not only gave us a swinging new take, but one that most people think of for this song. Santa Claus is coming to town, oh yeah! Santa Claus is coming to town! Number 5. Last Christmas, Wham! 
with all due respect to Andrew Ridgely, Last Christmas is really a George Michael song, and potentially his finest. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day, you gave it away. He wrote, sang, and performed most of the instruments, as well as recorded it largely solo. The track was a sensation, ensuring that the post-Wham days would be very successful. And no wonder. The lovely melody and the witty lyrics may have a somewhat somber approach to a happy holiday, but therein lies its true genius. It's a Christmas gem that's topped favorite lists many times, and has a memorable music video to match. We're not crying, you're crying. Number 4. Jingle Bells, Frank Sinatra when is a Christmas song not a Christmas song? When it's Jingle Bells. Now, we know you're thinking that we may have been sipping too much eggnog, but Jingle Bells technically isn't a Christmas song, per se. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All The Way. The 1850s original was titled The One Horse Open Sleigh, and the song actually has no lyrical ties to Christmas, and was therefore not intended to be a festive hit. Yep, we know you're going through the lyrics in your head to see if that's true. Over time, this changed, obviously, leading to Frank Sinatra's festive recording. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. It was also later a song transmitted from space, when the Gemini 6A astronauts serenaded ground control. Number 3. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, Judy Garland Originally written and performed in the classic Meet Me in St. Louis, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is a bittersweet and slower affair than many of its contemporaries. A little too much so as star Judy Garland and the film's director insisted that the lyrics be changed to make the number less melancholy. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. It did the trick. As the song was successful as a single, and popular for the armed soldiers overseas towards the end of the Second World War. The lyrics were altered again by the song's co-writer Hugh Martin for, again, Frank Sinatra in 1957. This version remains a holiday standard to this day, and the revised lyrics are considered to be definitive. Have yourself a merry little Christmas Number 2. All I Want for Christmas is You, Mariah Carey For our second greatest Christmas song, we have the delightful diva's distinctive tones in All I Want for Christmas is You. Strangely enough, despite selling over 16 million copies worldwide and being the best-selling Christmas single for a female artist, it also holds recognition for taking the longest time to reach the top of the U.S. Billboard charts. Released in 1994, the song took 25 years to get there in the U.S., finally reaching there in 2019. The following year, the song reached number one in the United Kingdom. Mariah Carey's song remains famous for at least one person at an office party trying to hit that note. Honestly, you can't. Please stop trying. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Thurl Ravenscroft. Iconic deep-voiced song from the animated special. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. Winter Wonderland. Felix Bernard and Richard B. Smith. A festive delight without references to festivities. Beautiful sight. We're happy tonight, walking in a winter wonderland. The Twelve Days of Christmas, Frederick Austin and Andrew Carter. Classic Christmas carol composed in the 18th century. Three French men, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Joy to the World, Isaac Watts. Another beloved carol dating back hundreds of years. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Where Are You Christmas, Faith Hill. Another Grinchy song, originally by Mariah, but recorded by Faith instead. Where are you, Christmas? Why can't I find you? Want more music content? Watch Mojo produces an original podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. 
The show provides authentic interviews with artists from all around the world, while also staying true to Watch Mojo's roots with top 10 music banter thrown into the mix. What's the best advice Alice Cooper's ever given you? Looking back at the staying power, does it shock you? Uh, no, we have naked pictures of the right people. If you want exclusive interviews with award-winning artists, producers, singers, songwriters, check out Inner Sleeve. Number one, White Christmas, Bing Crosby. Could it really have been anything else? Debuting in the 1941 movie Holiday Inn, Bing Crosby would become synonymous with the sounds of festivity thanks to White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It was so successful that Crosby would reprise the song in a movie of the same name 13 years later. Yet, despite being acknowledged as the people's choice of Christmas songs, the lyrics can only be related to at most half of the planet, since residents of the Southern Hemisphere have their Christmas during warm months. Potentially Bing's biggest song of his long career, he maintained that it would have been a success by almost anyone. Respectfully, we disagree. And they are agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.